So APIs have grown quite a bit. Um, and so how many are there? There are over 25,000 APIs now in the market. And at Data360, we can access all of them. Um, and so we can help you sort through all those different things. But if you have a dev team, if you have a data science team, if you have a business analyst, all of these groups can learn how to access APIs if they don't already have access. And there are many other tools, thousands and thousands of tools that can actually help you manage and collate and correlate APIs, uh, which I won't get into this presentation because it's, it's a lot of information, but there are tons and tons of ways to access this. So once you get the right expertise in place, you can access them and uh, do some amazing things. Uh, you can find APIs in a lot of different places. So uh, we saw earlier it was a rapid API, um, which is available. There's also programmable web, which can give you uh, tools, but you can actually just go to Google, type in any topic and type in API and voila, you have instant big data ready for you to begin to utilize in your applications. So APIs in the real world, what do they look like? Um, they look like unstructured data. So internally, if you're in the e-commerce business, structured data looks like product IDs and your pricing data, your customer account data, right? The stuff in your CRM, the stuff in your ERP, uh, the stuff in your data lakes, data warehouses, right? Um, those are all structured, uh, so structured data sources when they reference your products, your services, and your customers, right? Healthcare is patient forms, uh, medical insurance data, medical billing data, banking, it's financial transactions, customer account data. But API service up other things uh, like consumer behavior and spending patterns, uh, customer service satisfaction reviews, right? Uh, X-ray, MRIs, doctor notes, treatment recommendations, they are unstructured, but available in such a way that you can access them and then begin to process them, right? Call logs, web logs, all those fun things, right? So you can you can generate these things internally. You can also look at them externally from third-party providers, for example, that you might use for your call center, um, for uh, audio-video communications that you have in your in your ecosystem, but also even then further out, you know, videos on YouTube, videos on Vimeo, videos on Zoom calls, uh, conferences, conference. Uh, uh, symposiums, things like that. So there's all kinds, all this unstructured data around that can be analyzed and can be accessed for your applications. So then once you have that data, this is where we get into the natural language processing si uh, systems. You can also use it for machine learning, vision, speech, planning robotics. We're just going to talk about NLP and NLU today. Um, not so much about the rest, but you can see there's a wide variety of different processing systems you can do with this data. So you want to expand your repertoire beyond your own data source and then start to look at how do third party or or even secondary data sources. So data sources you have with other people, other people you're in transaction with, but also third parties who you don't have a transaction with, but relationship to the data or to the objects. How do you use that in such a way that you begin to create smarter applications, more efficient applications, so let's get to exploring that. So natural language processing and natural language generation, which I'm also not going to touch too much on today, are, are really two ways that AI, AI and ML are complemented so that big data can be powered up. So a lot of people reference AI for just like chatbots and um, you know your typical sort of search engine applications or you know, data mining, things like that, but there are many, many other kinds of applications that can be developed and can be used for um, bringing up more profit for your business. So just a quick primer on NLP and NLU. So NLP stands for natural language processing, and it's a subset of AI that's basically there to understand natural language. So it processes a large amount of natural language that data, and then it derives insights and information. Um, and natural language understanding, or NLU, is a subtopic of NLP, which basically is interpreting natural language, deriving meaning, uh, identifying context, and drawing insights. So some examples of NLP versus NLU. So 
With NLP, the idea is to break down the natural language text into sub into smaller and more manageable chunks. Um, it can be analyzed by machine learning algorithms to find relationships, dependencies, context, and various chunks of information. Um, and NLU basically enables the machine to understand the sentences with different words that may have sort of the same underlying question. So essentially, it can determine context, right? So here's some examples. So NLP and NLU working together could tell you that how is the weather today? Is it going to rain today? Do I need to take my umbrella today? Is the same context, right? Which is you're looking for the weather forecast. So the machine would be able to interpret all three of those things together to know the context is the weather forecast. That's what you're looking for the answer. So NLP plus NLU can answer those topics and then basically help you understand that that's, that's it's just one question actually. So what are all the questions that basically mean the same thing with different words? NLP and NLU working together can also determine the difference between uh, the context of how a word can have many different meanings. So for example, the banks will be closed for Thanksgiving and the river will overflow the banks during floods, right? So banks, meaning financial institutions, is the first thing that it's mentioning, which is it's talking about being close for the holidays versus a river bank, right? So NLP plus NLU can figure that out. It can determine the difference in the context based on the sentence and based on the type of information that's being used in that sentence to know uh, what it actually means. So this kind of task is called disambiguation. And basically it's under the NLU umbrella, which makes sure the machine is you understands the two different ways that different senses use those words bank, what bank means. Um, so once we have NLP and NLU in there, we can do a couple different things, right? So NLP basically can parse words, stop word removal, do parts of speech, so tag parts of speech and give it meaning. Uh, it can do tokenization, do many more things. And natural language understanding can interpret the natural language, derive meaning, identify context, and draw insights. So together, it, it tells you what, so NLP is like the what, and the NLU is the rest of who, the where, the why, and the how, right? So if you take those two together, you're able to then take all this information, your first party information, the second party information you have with another party, and, the, and your third party information, and then be able to put it together in such a way that you can have new context, right? So if, you're, if you don't have an engineering department already exploring these models and putting together these models, you're already losing. I can tell you that this is the hottest area that's happening out there, which is uh, going to save you a ton of money. So once you set up your uh, APIs with NLP, you can save money, right? And so that's why you want to invest in this discipline. And saving costs means more profit, right? So what are some examples of that? 